Well, it has been a cold and wet start to winter in Melbourne and we got a bit of a break in the weather. So we're gonna go out in the boat today, you're gonna try to catch a few fish and I've got a nice little winter warming meal I'm gonna try to make in the boat if we get a few, so stick with us. Fish, fish, fish. <laughs> What's on there? Uh, just a little plastic bounce on the bottom. All oh, right. You gonna get a hit? Oh yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't dragging, it was do, 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 do. It was definitely a hit. Man, this is just unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, snag. Yep. Yep. A little. Something little. Uh, yeah, the rapid head shakes usually mean smaller fish. Like the quicker the rod tip, rod tip is bouncing when you're bringing the fish in, generally the smaller the fish. Let's see. Let's see. He's not microscopic. Uh, I reckon that's probably going to be legal. <laughs> it's probably just cold. It's just cold. Oh, uh, it's going to be. It's going to be close. We don't need anything too big for our meal today. Oh, a second one on. Yeah. All right, so that's one. He was all like, that's amazing how small. I mean, he was tiny, put up hardly any fight, and he was 30 centimeters. So it's like, it's a legal fish. And I reckon we only need two, maybe three little ones to actually, because you know, the curry's got some onion and carrot and then there's, I've got rice to go with it, so. Oh, another one, <laughs> all right, that was, that was the next cast after that first fish. All right, well, looks like we are gonna have lunch after all. All right, come on, buddy. I'm sorry about your luck here, but I'm afraid you're gonna be part of a yellow curry lunch meal. Oh, he's putting up a little fight, this one. Jeez. Uh, yeah, this is a better fish, whatever it is. It's certainly gonna be bigger than the last, unless it's foul hooked or so. Oh, oh, it's a good fish. Yep, yep, that's probably lunch on its own, actually. All right, yeah. Just get the net man to do this, his job, because that's only six pound leader, and there he is. All right, lovely. That is a very, very nice fish report, Philip. And I think he's probably at that perfect size uh, to make a nice meal, but not so big that I feel obligated to put him back. I'm gonna measure on him. But yeah, that's a very nice size eating fish. Okay. All right, let's have a look. That is a, it's a 37 centimeter, oh, a little bit longer than that. 39 centimeters, that is really a perfect size eating fish. Won't feel guilty about taking that one home, but there's plenty of meat on it. That is, I would say, just about ideal. And we've obviously found the fish because that was two casts, two fish. We've certainly got enough for lunch now. So the catch and cook is on. Now the plastic I'm using today is just a little 2.5 inch grub. It's in the color Pearl by Jiggle Fishing and I'm using a seven gram jig head. And all we wanna do is we put the boat into a drift. I'm casting out in the direction we're drifting with the wind, even though there's very little wind today. Once it hits the water, just throw the bale over. Watch it sink in the water. As it sinks, you'll have to turn the reel over a little bit just to keep in contact with that lure. Once you get a big belly in the line, you'll know it's on the bottom. Take up the slack, give it a couple tugs, and then let it sink again. That's all I'm doing, just repeating the process. And as you saw, we just got two fish and two casts, so it seems to be working today. God, the sun's come out, we're getting like blue sky. It's ridiculous. The TT jig heads. What just happened? Wow, it's a special brand, it's stupid. What the?
broke. Broke at the knob. I don't know, maybe just go back to the marks that we started on. We caught fish there. I hope that's it, because that'll be no, it doesn't matter, was it? Like, there are a lot of those that just, just Yep. Yep. Now you see, I was talking and not doing much with the rod, and that is what the fish want <laughs> today. They, uh, oh, there he goes. That was an easy release. We call that the uh, one meter release, just one meter below the water. Have a little chat and. Uh, it's the easiest, safest way to release the fish, so I like to practice that whenever possible. <laughs> oh, see, you gotta pay attention. You just go around talking crap, and uh, I nearly missed that fish. <laughs> I've screwed around the last couple. I'm gonna try to pull this one in the boat because he's gonna be part of our lunch, I suspect. There we go. Yeah. He'll almost certainly be legal. I'm going to say he's going to be about 29. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now, this is what he's just spit up. That little minnow. So now we know what we're eating. That's what we need to match. Earlier I was uh, fishing the pearl, and I've just changed up to a pink and I'm looking at that and thinking the pearl is the color to go with. That is very close to the pearl color. And I said he was 29 and he is, he's 29, he is exactly 29. He's tiny though, I don't think there's any point in keeping him too. Alright, it's your lucky day buddy, you're not going to be curry. And there we go, there's our match the hatch. Now, if you have a look at the grub with the curly tail up, it certainly doesn't look like the same profile or size, but actually take that tail and stretch it out. What you're gonna find is you're gonna get a very similar size and color to the little minnows they're feeding on. So that is our match the hatch for today. All right, it's time to set up our on the water kitchen. Some bowls, got my little hiking cooker, onion, peanut oil, rice, measuring cup, yellow curry paste, fuel for the cooker, a couple of spoons, carrot, something to stir the pot with, and a fillet knife. First thing we gotta do is clean the fish. Now I typically keep the fish fresh in the cooler with some fresh water going. That way, depending on what I get, I can decide to keep or put back certain fish. Now of course, uh, you cannot take your bag limit and then upgrade and drop smaller fish, that is illegal. But if you get a handful of fish and you think, oh, I wanna take two or three for dinner or lunch, and later you wanna sort out which ones you wanna keep and which ones you wanna put back, that's perfectly legal. So I'm gonna dispatch those fish now, and once they're taken care of, I'm gonna bring them out and fillet them, and then we'll get started with the cooking. Oh my God, he almost jumped out of the boat. <laughs> that would've been a disaster, Jesus. <laughs> First time I've ever had that happen. He's still in there, just barely. <laughs> just gonna fillet these guys now. Now all I do is I cut behind one of the fins, just go down to the spine, and then I just go across, putting pressure on that backbone to the end. It's one. Same on the other side. I go between the two fins. Cutting forward towards the head. I turn when I get to the spine, keeping some pressure down. All right, there's your two fillets. In this case, discard that. It's gonna be dinner for someone else. I right, set those aside, now I do the same with the other fish. Cut down, get to the spine, turn the knife, run along the backbone. Really keeping that pressure down towards the backbone is what ensures that you get all the meat off. So there isn't 
much meat left behind, you can run your knife right down that. You can see the spine. We went right up to the spine. Certainly the bigger fish is a lot more meat on them. You get a lot more out of them. Down to the spine, turn, it's again. Pressure down on the spine, making sure you maximize that meat to the end. There we go, we'll discard that. Any guts that are remaining there, we take those, clear them out, throw them in the water. Now what I do, and it'll probably be hard to show you on camera here, but I use that remaining fin as a bit of a handle. And I stick my thumb in and I break the skin away from around that fin that's left behind. And that's what I hold on to when I pull the skin off the fish. So I've got that as a little handle. And then I use my other thumb and my other hand just run down like that, and now that's just come off. Skin's gone. Once again, that's your little handle. Work in behind that. There. And then I just, there. Probably show you a bit better on the bigger one. So here's, here's one of the bigger fillets. And so again, just get my thumb in just where the rib cage sort of meets that fin. You just want to get your thumb in behind that meat and break it down to where you get to the point that you got the skin. So now you've got this. You've got the skin and that fin separated from the flesh. And then that's going to allow you just to work your other thumb in back there. So you use that as a handle. And then you just work it down like that. That's it. Do it with the last one. Now I like to rinse the fish in salt water and conveniently we have a lot of that around today. So once I've got these skinned, I will give them a quick dunk in the salt water just to get all the guts and scales and stuff off. Now, the cutting out the rib cage can be kind of a challenging task. And I'll do my best to show you that. Now, all I do is I find the rib cage and then I just run my knife behind that until you're down to the rib cage. Then you just slowly cut along the red bones. Until you've created a boneless bit of fish just above those rib bones. You go all the way down. Then on the other side, particularly in the bigger fish, you can preserve a, preserve a fair bit of flesh this way. You run your knife down the inside of that stomach. And what we're gonna create in the end is a bit of a V here. And you just gotta make sure you go all the way up you get the entire rib cage out. And just run your hand across that and just see if you've got any ribs left, which I don't. So the rib cage has been taken out of there. All the ribs are gone. And I've just got boneless fish there. Now I'm gonna set up the cooker. I've gotta do the rice first, and then I'll set that aside in the bowls once that's ready, and then I'll do the curried fish to go on top of it. This is just a, a little hiking camp cooker. They're called, a, it's called a jet boil. And it is, um, it's really for hiking. Quite lightweight, made of titanium. I've got the big fuel canister with me today, but normally you would just have a real tiny one if you're using it for hiking purposes. So the reason these things are called jet boil is because they boil the water very quickly. And that water is on the verge of boiling already. I would say probably gonna bring this little bit of water I need uh, for the rice to a boil in I don't know, 60 seconds, something like that. It's incredibly fast. All right, the rice is done. 
Oop. Just gonna evenly distribute that between the two bowls and the floor of the tinny. All right, now I'm just gonna chop up some onion. Just brought a half an onion with me. Just gonna thinly slice the carrot. That's probably enough carrot. Ah, just got a bit of peanut oil. Add that in. Onions in there. And the carrots. Got to keep talking to the camera. So I've added a little bit of curry paste. I've added the sliced carrot. I've just added the fish. I've sort of chunked it up into little pieces and I sort of mixed it around and now I'm sort of trying to get the temperature right in there so it doesn't burn on the bottom. It is kind of a funny thing to, to cook in. This probably isn't the recipe you would normally use. I also would have uh, preferred to have had some coconut milk with me, which is what I was thinking, but I didn't pick any up before I left, so it's almost going to be more of a curry style stir fry or something. Uh, but anyways, we'll see. All right, I think this is cooked. And I'm hungry enough that it doesn't matter, I'm going to eat it anyways. Lunch? Sounds good. <laughs> all right, all done. Now we're gonna try. Doesn't look too bad. I was a little bit worried, actually. It's actually all right. Could have used probably a bit more of the curry and the coconut oil, and it would have been absolutely beautiful. In fact, in the description below, I'll leave the recipe that you should make, <laughs> not the one I just made. They're very similar, but yeah, this is actually not bad. It wasn't too bad a meal to make on the boat, actually, in the end. Yeah, the coconut milk, I reckon it's close enough, a little bit more spice in the coconut milk, and it would have been really good. Yeah. And the coconut milk would have helped it all cook together and it would have a nice sauce, like. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And the fact we came out here with the confidence that that we would catch a fish, <laughs> you know? Well, you brought all the ingredients. Yeah. So <laughs> I suppose you could have done a vegetarian curry. That's true, yeah. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> so much more useful. It's just it's so small and they've crammed so much in it. So like to get the cockpit and the deck and everything, it's just... We'll take it out at some point.